man in D.C., it, 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 it came a thing with him where he was, uh, you know, he was a short kind of guy. He was about 5'1", five 5'2", five real slim in the body, and a real big head. Okay. But he was getting money, though. People didn't know he was getting money. At that time, he was probably holding about a million, two million, and people didn't know okay. that he was holding like that. He was getting it. And uh, he had a real short man complex. Okay. Okay, and uh, like I said, we wasn't just business. We wasn't just business partners. We was, I knew a lot of his business. I knew his family. He knew my family in D.C. and in New York. You know, I knew his son's mother. I knew where he laid his head. He knew where I laid my head sometimes. You know, I knew some of his stashes. He knew some of my stashes. We became real close. So, and he was also the one with me with Rich. Okay. So we had a lot of secrets on one another. And um, he became, he had the short man comments, and he became, he started to become real jealous with me as far as through the people, because the people used to, since I was Alpo, people used to see him with me all the time and think he was working for me. Right. Because not until he, not until I came to D.C. really, he started coming out with like Benzes and all, because he seen what I was doing, so he started busting out with little Benzes and all that type of, 300 coupes and all that. Right. And I always had the reputation if, if you let me your car, Antoine, automatically that was my car. Right. That was my car, and then if they seen you with it, like, oh yeah, he driving pole car. So time went on, one day me and him and one of his workers were sitting at a table at a restaurant having a sandwich, mm-hmm. and, uh... He called my wife a bitch. He called my wife a bitch because he was like, man, are you still with that crazy bitch? And I just looked over at him. And I could have took it a little better if it was just me and him. But his, one of his workers was there. Right. And I kind of like gave him that look like, yo, you really disrespected me right now. And So he seen her. She was coming to look for me down southwest because she knew I hung out down there. So the kid, the guy seen her, he was like, yo, there go that bitch. Look at that bitch. Who she looking for? She must be looking for Poe. And my man Wayne heard him say this. And he beat me. He beat me then. It was like, yo, Gary was down here talking trash about you and uh, he disrespected your wife. I was going to kill him right there, but I said, let me get with you first. Because I was like, no, I still got love for the kid. No, he's just, he's just frustrated right now. And we had a lot of secrets on one another. And I always told them before this happened, I said, you know, we know so much about one another that if we was to ever get into any type of confusion or anything, one of us would have to leave. And I'm definitely not going back to New York because I'm getting money. <laughs> so the only thing else is one of us will have to die. He was like, yo, I feel you. Because we knew a lot about one another. So now I got this deal coming up with this, this connect. Like, yo, this big, this, this crazy big deal. Like, yo, they want me to put up like, I had to put up like maybe about two million. They was going to hit me with like probably about, i say anywhere from like six million dollars worth of coke in New York. Produced yeah, yeah, yeah but it was like about six million dollars. So they wanted me to put up like two million dollars, and I owe four. Okay. Right. So I had like one point five. I put up like one point five, and I was just telling my little man for him to just put up a half a mil. Okay. I was able to put up the whole. I could have put up the whole two million at that time. Okay. This would have just set us on the map for, and it was at it was at like eleven thousand a key, ten thousand a key. Mm. I could have came to DC and got nine, nineteen thousand. To the dudes who I didn't really like and the dudes who I was real cool with, I could have got 17, you know? Mm-hmm. That was like $6,000, $8,000 profit. So before this goes about, he, uh, his anger is really building up with me and all that. He's not really, he's not really feeling me like that anymore. And we really had stopped hanging out, you know, but I didn't really pay no attention to it. I'm saying I still got love for this kid and all that. So he tells somebody down in Lawton Prison about this deal. He told somebody that he was cool with down there. Only thing he didn't know that same person that he's telling, they know my man, Wayne. Mm-hmm. My man Wayne, he get to me, say, yo, you about to put a deal together in New York for this, 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 that, and gonna put that. I said, what the hell? I said, how you know? He said, well, man, my man called me down from law, and he said, Gary told him that, yo, that you want to put this deal together, and it ain't gonna go, you know, he gonna wind up doing you in the process. Just how much anger he built up for me. So I said, oh, yeah. So my man was like, yo, let's go. I said, no, we got to do this right now. Can't just be running up on Gary in broad daylight. That's going to come back to us. So we got to do this right, and we got to get him where nobody know. So so my, my little man Gary, he had a little beef with somebody, and, and they tried to, they just, like, maybe like a month earlier, they tried to kill him. And uh, so uh, 
So he beats me one night and said, yo, kid, kid, one of the kids' name was Jawbreaker out of D.C., the kid named Jawbreaker. He said, yo, yeah, I know where Jawbreaker them at. This is Gary talking to us on the phone. Like, yo, I know where the kid Jawbreaker them at. They had such and such, such and such. I said, oh, yeah. I, so I'm talking to my phone. I said, who you with? He said, yo, I'm by myself. I said, you, you got something? He said, yeah, I got, I got, me, uh, I got two pistols with me now. I said, all right. I was, I was with my man Wayne and, like, two other dudes that were under my man Wayne. So that was our perfect opportunity. My man Wayne was like, yo. Produced this is it. Contrast Make it happen. Productions. So we go, we and my, we and uh, we jump in this kid MPV van because we used to like using MPV van because they had the little side compartments we could throw the pistols in there if the police pull us over. Okay. Real quick, so we jump in the MPV van. So I'm driving because I was since I was like the best driver. So so we go meet the kid Gary because this is a perfect opportunity. Don't nobody know he's with us now. And, and when we come up missing, we can always be like, man, you know, I knew how to deny it quick. Okay. So we go get him. Boom. So we go get him. He gets into the MPV van. He parks his car, whatever. He parks his truck. He had the truck at the time. He parks his truck. I met him on, uh, what's that, uh, Florida Avenue. I go meet him on Florida Avenue. Florida Avenue by a, a, a Wendy's, I think it was. Okay. We get a little revolver out mm-hmm. of the out the stash, and I give it to the dudes that's sitting in back of my man Gary. So my man Gary, he's in the middle, but he don't know that we don't slip the revolver to the back to the kid who's gonna hit him in the head. Mm-hmm. We ran for about five, ten minutes after we get the gas. Bang, my man hit him. I give the signal through the rear view mirror. My man hit him with the revolver, two in the head. All you hear is, ugh. Once he hit him, because the kid Gary was getting kind of sleepy, because it was, we was about to be like, yo, we ain't gonna catch these dudes. So, he, you know, Gary was getting kind of sleepy, so he's like dozed off for a minute. So he never even seen it or felt it coming. So the kid hit him with the revolver, bow, bow, you know, so. The bullets don't go nowhere because in the revolver, they don't pop out. Okay. So he hit him in the head twice. Don't. Gary, he winds up, he, his, he, he winds up shitting on himself. Okay. From his muscles relaxing. Okay. So, so, you know, he's stinking up the car and all that. So that's how the thing came about that his, his dick was chopped off. So we had to find some woods. So we I had to find somewhere to dump him at. So we wind up, we wind up taking him in this park over on 16th Street in Northwest. I don't know if it's Potomac Park. I think it's called Potomac Park. Or so we wind up taking him over there. And I said, yo, man, we're going to leave him in the woods. So I said, yo. So we pull over in this real dark, this real dark. I said, yo, take off his clothes, man, so they won't spot him through the clothes and all that. Take off his clothes and, and leave him naked in the woods. So we do that, and we're dragging him through the woods naked. Uh-huh. So he gets a couple of scratches on his body and his face and on his penis because, you know, it's, we, we're taking him through the woods. We're dragging him. Okay. So that's how it came about that they thought... We chopped off his dick and all that. And I thought where we left him at was real cool, but Matt was real cool, but we wound up leaving him next to uh, like a, uh, some type of telephone, some type of telephone box or something. And the next day, it just so happened that the telephone people was coming out to fix this box. Mm. And that's how they found him the next day. Uh, the-